Thank you very much. And first of all, I'd just like to start by thanking um, the European Specialist Nurse, Nurses Organization for the opportunity to share with you some data from the survey conducted on behalf of the Foundation of European Nurses in Diabetes. And it's my pleasure as one of the leads of this survey to be able to share with you that, that data with you um, today. And this survey was led um, in conjunction with Professor Angus Forbes from King's College in London. So, you know, we've, we've all had an awful lot of information and heard a lot about COVID-19 and corona, uh, the coronavirus disease. Um, so in terms of a background, I thought I would share with you some dates just to take us all on a bit of a reflective journey. So on the 11th of February this year, it was one year since the World Health Organization had attributed the name COVID-19 to the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. So we're over a year now with this in our lives. On the 21st of February, um, it was one year since in Europe we experienced the first of the regional um, areas of re regional restriction, restriction, areas of restriction when Lombardy in northern Italy went into um, what we're now all very familiar with our lockdown or restrictions and um, so that was over just over a year ago and we are coming up to the uh, first anniversary since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 you know, as a pandemic. So I suppose by way of background I thought I might just change things up in relation to um, when we're thinking about COVID-19. But to reflect on COVID-19 and co the coronavirus disease and certainly at the start of the pandemic, it became very apparent from the emerging data that some of the groups, some groups were at a higher risk of severe infection. So they'd, um, and severe infection and severe mortality and morbidity compared to other groups. And in relation to those groups, pe older people and people with underlying medical conditions, including diabetes, were considered high risk. Now, in relation to diabetes and in relation to some of the other underlying conditions, people living with diabetes weren't, while they may not have been more susceptible to contracting COVID-19 infection, once they had become infected with it, their morbidity and their mortality rates were significantly greater than people who didn't have diabetes. So with this in mind, um, I suppose it impacted how diabetes services um, we're working. So in relation to this, I work in a clinical academic team at King's College in London, where there are nurse, where we're predominantly nurses, but we do have healthcare professionals of um, from other um, allied healthcare professionals. Most of us have a clinical remit as well as an academic role. So in relation to our experiences, both clinically and academically, and in general life for all of us, we were all experiencing significant disruption around the onset of this pandemic. And as diabetes nurses and diabetes healthcare professionals, we tried, we were thinking about, you know, what best could we do in relation to the um, to this pandemic and what would be helpful. And one of the suggestions was to try and characterize the perspectives of diabetes nurses in relation to the impact of the pandemic and therefore identifying factors that could maybe mediate change and, and support change for people living with diabetes and diabetes services across Europe. Therefore, drawing on some already established networks, we worked with the Foundation of European Nurses in Diabetes to establish a consortium. And this consortium was drawn, was drawn on from nurses from already established networks across Europe, particularly from FENS, um, Fen's own networks and the networks of their president, Mrs. Um, Anne-Marie Felton, and their the chairperson, Mrs. Christian de Backer. So the aim of this survey really was to characterize um, the perspectives of diabetes nurses, and to meet this aim, it was decided that the best route would be via an electronic questionnaire. Therefore, we set about developing a questionnaire using a rapid Delphi method from um, in conjunction with the nurses from across Europe. And the importance of working with nurses across Europe meant that we were able to um, preserve, you know, con consider the content validity, but also the fidelity 
of the questionnaire once translated. So the questionnaire consisted of short response questions, ordinal scales, ranking scales, and some exercises and preference indicators. The survey was first developed in English and then it was translated by the members of the consortium into their local languages. And this was done either by using official translators or with working with um, healthcare professionals with advanced language skills. And then this ultimately helped to preserve the fidelity of the questions within the questionnaire. The questionnaire was distributed electronically via established diabetes nursing networks across Europe. An ethics for this was, a, um, was sought via King's College in London. So in relation to the, the, the distribution, um, so from a conversation that started in Europe, the survey was distributed across 27 countries in Europe. Now the countries in red are the countries that had members um, involved in the consortium and the green um, dots represent the countries where the survey was um, additionally cascaded to via diabetes nursing networks. As I said, it was developed in English and translated into 16 additional languages. So in relation to the results of the survey, overall, there were 2,212 responses to the survey and any response that was less than 40% complete was excluded from the analysis and um, therefore leaving a response rate for, for inclusion in the analysis of 1,829 responses. The data were analysed predominantly as descriptive analysis, and this was um, predominantly quantity, um, quantitatively um, with some quantitative content analysis. So in relation to the initial descriptive analysis, we have presented these data um, in, already in a paper in diabetic medicine in conjunction with the country leads from the, the, the consortium. For the content analysis of the open questions, of which there were eight open questions, we worked initially with the diabetes team at King's College in London to yeah. develop the frameworks. And this was done iteratively to first develop and then test and pilot these coding frameworks. And once this had been established, these coding frameworks, along with the data from each of the respective countries, was given to the country lead, who then translated the responses to English and coded the data. So in relation to the open questions, um, these questions related to what were the impact on people living with diabetes in the services of the nurses who responded, and the questions related to what was the single and um, biggest positive impact, the biggest negative impact, and the single most important thing for it that um, influenced or that helped people living with diabetes attending services. In relation to our second domain, it was the impact of the diabetes service of themselves. So in terms of which groups of people needed to be prioritized, what was the biggest challenge to services, and what was the most useful change that services made or implemented to um, support their, their people living with diabetes, but also to support the services themselves. And finally, the, um, the third domain related to the impact on diabetes nurse, nurses themselves in relation to what was the um, most difficult thing for the nurses themselves during the pandemic and what helped the nurses themselves, what was the biggest, uh, the most helpful thing for them during the pandemic. So in relation to the participants, we had participants from the, the, the 27 countries. And as you can see, uh, almost a third of the respondents came from the UK. Um, to the far uh, right of the, the chart, you can see there's a country called Other. And it's not that we've introduced a new country in Europe, but this country is a, an, an amalgamation of some of the countries where we had smaller number of responses. Now, these responses didn't relate to fewer nurses um, responding in those countries, but really it, these, this is made up of countries where we have smaller numbers of diabetes nurses working, such as Gibraltar and Malta. So the, par the participant characteristics, almost two thirds of the nurses have worked in diabetes care for more than eight years. And in relation to education, over a quarter of the nurses have attained a degree level education, with almost a half of these having a postgraduate 
diabetes qualification. And I think it's important today to recognize that across Europe, there are different education levels and expectations. And um, so that is reflected in this. And in relation to accredited diabetes courses, and these are courses that were accredited within the respondent's own home country, over 80% of the respondents had um, completed an accredited diabetes specific course. In relation to the caseload of the nurses, again, um, two thirds of the nurses worked in specialist services, hospital based services, and the remainder were community based. And in relation to the people they worked with, again, there was a mix between um, adults living with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, with some respondents um, working exclusively with adults with type 2 diabetes, and these tended to be nurses working in primary care areas exclusively, or adults with type 1 diabetes. There were um, a group of respondents who worked with children and adolescents, and then there were other conditions, and this really relates to those working with women during pregnancy and maternity and women's health areas, as well as um, people living with cystic fibrosis related to diabetes. So in relation to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on diabetes nurses work, 67% reported that they had to prioritize the care for people attending their services. And when we think of prioritizing care, this also meant that these nurses had to stratify and um, had to ration the care that they were able to provide people attending their services. And this was a new experience for many of the nurses. And the groups prioritized were those considered with high risk people um, with, from a diabetes high risk perspective, those newly diagnosed with diabetes during pregnancy, those with higher glucose levels or acute diabetes events, and then such, some other things such as and um, some of the examples were people who were newly commenced on technology such as insulin pumps that needed um, more intense care and support at that time. The respondents were asked to indicate the contact method they had with the people living with diabetes attending their services. And this was ranked from one to five, from the most to the least common. And as you can see, face-to-face -face individual sessions were the most common um, reported contact methods with people living with diabetes, followed by group and um, face-to-face sessions and virtual contact and um, ranking yet less common. The, the nurses then were asked to rank, you know, how this changed or what was the what what were what was the most and least common methods of contact during the pandemic. And as you can see, there was a shift from this in-person contact to a more virtual contact with telephone and email being the um, the, the most frequently ranked as the most common method of contact with face-to-face -face group sessions being the least common method of contact. Now, in relation to the impact on diabetes services and resources, the nurses also provided their perspectives on their, their perspectives of the disruption of the pandemic. And this is in relation to diabetes care with people living with diabetes. And they were asked to to run, you know, what, what level of disruption they felt the pandemic impacted their services. And from this, we can see that almost half of the nurses indicated that the care to people with diabetes was quite severely or extremely disrupted. The self-management support to people living with diabetes that they could provide, again, was quite severely or extremely disrupted. With the provision of diabetes education being quite severely or extremely disrupted, being reported by almost two thirds of the respondents. And while the technical support um, was disrupted, only about a fifth of the nurse in, nurses indicated that this was a severe or an extreme disruption. With a third of the nurses indicating that the psychological support that they were able to provide to people living with diabetes was severely or extremely disrupted. And as we can see, these disruptions occurred across the responses across the countries in Europe. So in relation to the impact on services, the nurses also indicated in their open text responses that um, they were able to identify innovative methods for service delivery. Um, and two thirds of almost two thirds of the nurses indicated that they were able to um, establish some innovative methods to work around this. However, some of the innovations were both supportive and challenging. So in terms of the supportive innovative, innovative methods, digital contact 
as we can all um, imagine, you know, was considered supportive by almost a third of the respondents. And also supportive, it was considered supportive that nurses now were able to maintain access to patients' care and ma maintain this remote access. And also it was supportive to be able to provide diabetes specific COVID-19 resources. And one of the nurses responded that um, it was supportive to be able to provide remote access and or remote access, but be able to access people's data and video calls. However, in terms of the challenges, as supportive as, as uh, virtual care delivery was, it was also challenging for people. Um, and there were issues around access to clinical resources and information. And there was a bit of a time gap in getting these up and running and established. And there was also difficulty in being able to support vulnerable groups. And, as, and one of the respondents indicated it was really challenging to not just quickly, but to safely find new ways to conduct these consultations. So moving on to the, the diabetes nurses perspective of the impact of COVID-19 on people living with diabetes. And most of the nurses indicated that there was a significant increase in the fifth in the um, in the physical in the clinical problems, the, the physical clinical problems that people presented with. And whilst here we can see that just 17.5% of the respondents indicated that there was a significant increase in foot complications presenting, we do know that the knock-on impact of that has been quite significant with significant deterioration um, and morbidity amongst these people. Importantly, almost half of the respondents indicated that there was a significant increase in depression amongst people attending diabetes or people attending their service living with diabetes. Two thirds of the nurses indicated that there was a significant increase in diabetes distress and over 82% of the respondents reported that there was a significant increase in anxiety amongst the people living with diabetes and um, attending their services. And again, these physical and psychological um, increased significant uh, increased risks were reported across Europe. And so to summarize, um, and I know I've shared a lot of information with you um, in a short period of time, but I think one of the things we can take from this survey is that, um, and what this consortium has demonstrated is that there was a real willingness amongst diabetes nurses or what, across Europe to work collaboratively together during a time of heightened stress and workload, the nurses were very willing to participate and support the consortium, but also to participate in the survey. We've also established that across Europe, the diabetes nursing workforce is highly experienced and educated, and that the diabetes nursing or the diabetes services across Europe have experienced substantial disruption to the care and to the services that they can provide. The perspectives of the diabetes nurses have also indicated an increased physical and psychological stress, anxiety and distress amongst people living with diabetes during the pandemic. And whilst I haven't presented them today, we do know from our data that diabetes nurses across Europe have themselves been negatively impacted by, the, um, by working and living during the pandemic. I would like to leave you with my penultimate slide, and this is a list of the nurses who participated in the consortium and were very grateful to FEND for the support they provided to be able to conduct this survey on their behalf and to work with them and their, um, their network to undertake this survey. And finally, this is, these are just some contact details of Professor Angus Forbes um, at King's College London and myself and then a specific survey email address if anybody has any further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rita. It was a very interesting survey and I, I, I learned a lot from it. I I'd now like to open the floor if people have uh, questions uh, and comments. And perhaps the first thing we could do is maybe if you have people have questions for clarification to understand some of the things that you said. So floor is yours, everyone in the audience. Use the chat function. Um, and while I'm um, we're waiting for people to make some comments, I, I had a couple of questions. Um, is this the first sort of pan-European survey that's been carried out amongst European diabetes nurses? No, several years ago we undertook a survey to try and establish 
um, the levels of education and qualifications required for diabetes nurses across Europe. And again, we had quite a good response from that. Um, but in terms of the data and the data presentation, that tended to be presented at a national level rather than collectively at a pan-European level. Okay. So, you know, we, we had that track record that we, we were able to draw on those um, networks and connections. Thanks. And um, I, I was very struck by right at the beginning, you explained how um, there was, wasn't an increased risk of catching COVID-19, but there was an increased, significant increased risk of complications um, if you did get COVID-19. And I, I was wondering if, you know, given the privileged relationship of the diabetes nurses with their diabetes patients, whether your nurses were being asked to provide, you know, specific prevention messages to help and because you said that there was a rise in, in diabetes anxiety so I'm sure there's, there were a lot of media messages so diabetes patients often stuck in their own home seeing on the media there's a greater risk for them so really increasing their fear level and what was you know to what extent were the, the diabetes nurses involved in trying to give messages about you know here's how you keep yourself safe you know here's how to wash your hands properly here's how to put your mask on properly did any of that come through in the in the survey? So what did come through in the survey was the diabetes specific element of trying to prevent infection and managing their diabetes should they become unwell. So what we what was very evident from the survey was that people developed and shared their own resources, their own specific resources. So for example, within diabetes care, there are things called sick day rules or sick day guidelines where somebody's unwell their blood sugars will increase so people are given you know algorithms to follow in turn you know I'm, I'm saying that obviously it's not universal but so for people on insulin they'll be given um instructions on how to titrate their insulin to increase their insulin based on their blood sugar levels so we call those sick day guidelines so what services and what nurses tended to do was actively distribute these amongst their the people attending their services. So all so certainly the service I'm attached to, and this is true for you know many of the people in the survey, they actively provided information in relation to managing sick day rules, managing uh, sick day guidance, managing infection prevention around diabetes. There was this was underpinned by the the promotion of the general guidance of hand washing and you know coughing etiquette but the diabetes specific things and um, where people were proactively providing these to people attending their services and about having sufficient resources particularly if people were um restricting their movements you know and weren't able to you know access their pharmacies and stuff like that it was about increasing their their supplies at home so that they that they wouldn't run out of blood glucose monitoring, testing strips, so they wouldn't run out of medication or insulin. Mm 